The title of my sermon is How We Face Change Financially. And I preached this on Sunday, September the 27th, at the drive-in church at Prospect and then indoors at Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Larry Jamison. You know, in 2 Corinthians 9-7, the Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, praise the Lord. Because giving to God is such a source of joy, and providing for our family is an honor and a blessing. But dear ones, what if we don't have enough money to take care of our family? Now today, I'm completing a series of sermons about how we face change. And this last sermon is about our financial stewardship. And really, I want to focus my attention for this sermon on the young people of our congregation. And I want the older ones to listen to. And it's very important you have a part to play in this, but it's really important. And it's going to make a difference in the lives of many, many people yet to be born. Now, in 2 Corinthians 9, the Bible says that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And that's a truism. You know, we reap what we sow. Now, this verse is not just about farming. It is also about our financial education. And when it comes to money, we all have room to improve in this area. You know, I recently read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert uh, Kiyosaki. And I was astounded by this sentence, quote, a person can be highly educated, professionally successful, and financially illiterate, end quote. Oh, wow. I wondered about how that could be. And then I thought about it quite a bit. Just that one sentence. You know, just because someone is smart and successful in one area of their life does not make them smart and successful in another area of their life. And oh, isn't this the human condition? You know, we see this through all the pages of the Bible because nobody's perfect. And even the best kings of Israel, you know, like David and Solomon, even the most godly prophets like Isaiah and uh, Jeremiah, they had areas in their lives where they had profound weaknesses. And that is one of the things that I love about the Bible, because it is brutally honest about people. You know, you have strengths and weaknesses, and so do I, because everybody does. And it should not surprise or amaze us that many people who have a lot of money are financial idiots. You know, the Willis Tower Watson Company has done research that proves that one out of five people earning $100,000 a year, that's a lot of money, they live from paycheck to paycheck and they don't understand why it is happening to them. There's a survey of household economics that has reported that 40% of Americans don't have an extra $400 in the bank to pay for an unexpected bill. Now that, that is the definition of living paycheck to paycheck. The very first lesson that experts in personal finance teach is that it's important to create an emergency fund to help you cope with emergencies. Now, we need to ask the question, where do we learn about finances? Well, you know what? Our public schools are not adequately teaching three important things. Number one, personal finance. Now, personal finance is all about how we understand and, mo and manage money. Two, entrepreneurship. That's looking out for what people need thinking of innovative new solutions, and then taking calculated risks. And, and you either buy or create a business, and then you let the business make money for you. And third, investing. And that's how we let money become our employee. And that's when we buy stocks or bonds or real estate or uh, other forms of income. Okay, so moms and dads and grandparents. The ball is in your court right now. If you don't promote 
this important part of education, then your children and your grandchildren are at risk of becoming poor. And I am completely serious because public schools are not adequately teaching the four basic ways to make money. Now, what are those four ways? Well, there's the job, you know, and that basically involves selling your time and working for someone else. And this is what we all uh, grew up with understanding. But, you know, there's a lot more than just a job. You could own a business. Uh, number three, you could invest in financial assets such as stocks, bonds, and real estate. And number four, you could loan your money either to a bank or to other persons and gain the interest from that loan. And those are the four ways that we can make money. You know, there's a movie called Gone with the Wind. And in that movie, there is a turning point for Scarlet. You know, things got really bad in the plantation called Terra. And so that many people were starving. And that is when Scarlet woke up. And she made a decision about her life. And that's when she said this famous line. She put her hand into a fist and she said, as God is my witness, as God is my witness, they're not going to lick me. I'm going to live through this. And when it is all over, I'll never be hungry again. And then, uh, you know, the music starts playing. Bum, 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 bum. And the, like, the, uh, the camera pulls back and it shows Charlotte standing there by the tree in the dark. And she's like shaking her fist and she's making this commitment. Okay, I, <laughs> I remember this movie so well. Now, some of us need a turning point in our financial lives. And we need to wake up and smell the plantation burning. We need to get good and angry and make a decision to do what needs to be done. Now, when it comes to our financial health, it isn't about how much money you make. And it's not about money at all, really. It's about our attitude and our thinking about money. The problem is not in our pockets. The problem is in our heads. And once you get honest, humble, and eager to learn, then you will learn, you will succeed. You know, God wants you to succeed. I want you to succeed. And you have to decide if you want you to succeed. Now, maybe right now is your scarlet gone with the wind moment. And the music will start playing, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> you know what? If you start reading books about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and investing, God is going to bless that research. You know, it is widely believed that a home or a car are the two biggest financial expenses that we ever have. You know what? That's wrong. It's not a house and it's not a car. It's taxes. And that is why every baby, every child, and every young adult in your family needs a Roth IRA. Now, it's it's not enough just to get your kids a Roth IRA. You need to put in the effort to teach them why they need it and teach them how to build it over a lifetime. You know, you can help them understand that a Roth IRA will become a gigantic source of happiness for them and for their family if they learn how to use this simple tool. You know, I want to share with you the biggest takeaway I got from the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, it's a simple definition for assets and liabilities. An asset puts money in your pocket. A liability takes money out of your pocket. Wow, it's just that simple. It's a very simple definition. But lots of people get this wrong. You know, the book goes on to say that the rich buy assets. The poor only have expenses. And the middle class, they buy liabilities that they think are assets. Oh, this is really important. Another quote uh, from that book is, once you understand the difference between assets and liabilities, concentrate your efforts on buying income generating assets, end quote. Wow, that is absolutely solid advice that I never got when I was growing up. You know, all I heard when I was growing up was go to school and get a job. 
Does this sound familiar? Go to school and get a job. And it might, you know, throw in there, don't do drugs. <laughs> well, I did that. I followed that advice. You know what? I was lucky because the United Methodist Church invested for me. And someday I'm going to receive a pension from the United Methodist Church. And for that, I thank God. You know, this is my 40th year of pastoral ministry. And I've been in the United Methodist Church now. This is my 40th year. I can't believe it. It's been that long. But dear ones, guess how many Americans today will get a pension? Okay, this is such a good quiz. Only 13% of Americans get a pension. Now, I think that's a staggering number. And that is why every baby, every child, and every young person in your family, they need a Roth IRA. And they need a family that is interested in personal finance, entrepreneurship, and investing. You know, we all tend to underestimate change because we are all hardwired to dislike it. You know, I've preached four sermons now about how we can face change. And I've said, you know, over and over again every week, I've said that the best way to face change is to turn to God, ask for his help, and then rest on his promises. And if we do that, then God will strengthen and prepare us spiritually physically, emotionally, and financially, so that you and your family are prepared for change. But you know what? Most people are not going to listen. Most people didn't listen to my sermons, and most people are not listening now. And we all seem to have kind of a, like a blind spot in our minds about change. And so, because it is so difficult for us to accept change, I'm going to end my sermon series by making five predictions about what is going to happen in our economic system in the future. And no, <laughs> I'm not Karnak the Magnificent. I, I'm just a guy who likes to follow trends in science and technology and then try to anticipate what effects those advances will have on our culture. So dear ones, here are my five predictions. Prediction number one, CRISPR and DNA sequencing are gonna fundamentally alter how we do agriculture and medicine. Okay, prediction number two, the world is going to rapidly transition from oil to electricity, and all the cars that we see will become electric, and oh yes, those cars will drive themselves, and the tipping points are battery chemistries, battery design, and manufacturing, and nuclear fusion. Okay, prediction number three. Robotics combined with artificial intelligence will revolutionize business and industry worldwide. And you know what? There's gonna be a lot more robots in the world. Prediction number four, the internet will morph into a neural network because of big data, artificial intelligence, and supercomputers. We cannot afford to ignore the central role of the internet in our culture and in our church. The internet's gonna be more and more important going forward. Okay, prediction number five. Bitcoin, blockchain, and DeFi, which stands for decentralized finance. These are going to revolutionize the financial landscape of our economy. Cryptocurrency is not a fad and it will become mainstream. Okay, those, those are my five predictions, and <laughs> I hope somebody's listening. I'd like to, uh, to pray for you. Dear Lord, the whole world is changing, but you never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, dear God, bless the people of Prospect, Trinity, and Asbury Church spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially so that they can have strong, healthy, and wise families. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to my sermon.